Warning, the following review contains major spoilers for Avengers Endgame. Hello and welcome to Reboot Theater. I'm your host, The Invisible Man. Well, they did it again. They made a Spider-Man movie all about Tony Stark. The difference is, at least last time, Tony Stark was alive and played a starring role. This time he's dead, only seen in flashbacks, and he still managed to upstage Spider-Man in his own movie! Seriously, guys? I can understand Peter grieving over Tony's death, and I would expect him to be broken up after losing his mentor slash father figure. But to make the entire movie about him, again, is just plain overkill. This isn't an Iron Man movie. It's a Spider-Man movie. How about we make it about Spider-Man this time? Huh? Can we do that? Let's jump right into Spider-Man Far From Home. The movie opens with Nick Fury and Maria Hill driving through the Mexican desert to a tiny town called... Uh, I... is... is... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this. Tango, I think? They find the town in ruins and meet an obvious supervillain posing as a hero. Who are you? You don't want any part of this. Okay, yes, I was familiar with this character beforehand, so I'm kind of cheating. But come on, even without knowing who he is, I think it's pretty obvious he's a poser. After all, the first movie opened up with the villain, so it only makes sense that this movie opened with the villain too. Then we cut to a student film, similar to that other movie, and we get a Comic Sans tribute to the fallen Avengers who gave their lives in the Infinity War. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so purposely cheap. It's hilarious. This is exactly the kind of thing a high school student would make. Gone, but not forgotten. We'll make sure of that. You won't be able to get this guy out of your head. This year has been nothing short of... It is crazy. It's like insane. Jason. What? No swearing. Okay, hang on. I need to address this. Betty Brandt. Why is her name still Betty? Yes, when the original comics came out, that was a common name for young girls. But now? That's not a name anymore! I don't know anyone under the age of 40 who goes by Betty. Elizabeth, sure, or Liz, Beth, Liza, but Betty? Who names their daughter Betty? This is just another tricky side effect of using retro characters in a modern adaptation. Do you update the name? Do you stay true to the original? Ugh, it's... Just so complicated. Anyways, Miss Brand reminds us that half the universe got snapped and then got brought back five years later. The event became known as the Blip. Everyone who blipped came back the same age, while everyone who didn't blip grew five years older. And conveniently, all of Spider-Man's friends just so happened to blip. So they don't need to get new actors. Ain't that great? Hey, sorry I'm late. Oh, you look lovely. Thanks, you too. Okay, these two are sleeping together. It's a new beard. It's my, my Blip beard, because I grew it. In the blip. Where is it, John Furrow? Hmm? Where's Iron Man 4? I know you could direct another one if you wanted to, so where is it? Huh? Where's Iron Man 4? Well, technically, the previous Spider Man movie was Iron Man 4, and this one is Iron Man 5. You wanna know why? Because they still can't stop talking about him throughout the whole movie. What is it like to take over from Tony Stark? There's some big shoes to fill. I'm gonna go. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming. <laughs> so Peter heads on a class trip to Europe, just like that other movie where he went on a class trip, and it doesn't take long for Flash to start giving him a hard time. Parker, this is called an airplane. It's like the buses you're used to, except it flies over the poor neighborhoods instead of driving through them. Well, at least you can't call him Puny Parker anymore. He's even punier! Ma'am, he blipped, so technically he's 16, not 21. I'll take that. <laughs> I love MJ! And apparently so does Peter, but in a weird turn of events, he gets stuck in the back of the plane while MJ watches movies with Brad, and Ned bonds with... <laughs> no, 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 no. You wanna tell me there's a kid that can climb up walls and swing from rooftops? Fine, I'll believe that. But Ned and Betty becoming a couple? Uh-uh. No. Not happening. No. I guess that's kind of the joke. It's so unrealistic, it's hilarious. But how do you go from this... Have you, have you like, ever played any kind of PC game? No. ...to this... Hey, babe. Huh? Can you hold this for me, please? Yeah, of course. Thanks. ...in the course of a nine-hour flight! <laughs> so the vacation gets off to a good start until... You guessed it! <laughs> DISASTER STRIKES! Luckily, there comes a new superhero to deal with this threat, a man named Quentin Beck, a.k.a. Mysterio. 
Well, good thing he showed up in the very nick of time to stop the monster. Coincidence? Mm, I'm sure it's nothing. Then Peter tries to help, but remembers he sucks, and then Mysterio finishes off the water monster. Later that night, Nick Fury comes to talk to him about the day's events, and gives him one last present from Tony Stark. You know, you could make a drinking game out of all the times he gets mentioned in this movie. Okay, we see his picture in the intro. I'd say that's worth a shot. And the reporters mention him. There's another shot right there. Then we see a mural of him. Wow, three shots in the first ten minutes. Oop, oh, Stark Industries. There's a movie about him on the plane. Seriously? There's a picture of him in the frickin' airport. No, oh, no! Get back! I'm not as thing as you drunk I am. And that's all of them. So Peter properly meets Mysterio, who explains he's from a parallel Earth. I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? No, Sony. No, no, no. Don't do this. Don't ruin the one good Spider-Man you have right now by bleeding it dry. You can't just knock it out of the park with one movie and then reuse that same premise in all of your other movies. Then it just becomes a cliche. Do you remember a while back when every blockbuster had a sky beam in it? It got pretty old pretty fast. So please, for the love of all that is Spider-Verse, don't use that premise in other movies! Don't ever apologize for being the smartest one in the room. There's only one left, fire. The one that destroyed my earth. It's the one that took my family. Let's see, this guy seems likable, has a sob story about his plant dying, and throws in a dead family for good measure. How is anyone falling for this? I mean, really, the nervous fidgeting with his non-wedding ring? Because I guarantee he's never been married. Why would Nick Fury take his words at face value? Nick Fury is not what I'd call trusting of complete strangers. Because he lost an eye last time. It's just a scratch. No. And there actually is a reason why he seems so out of character, but we'll revisit that a little later. Fury tells Spider-Man he needs him in Prague to fight the fire monster, but Peter says no. So what does Fury do? Why, hijack the whole trip, of course! He takes the liberty of changing the itinerary of Peter's class trip, and on the way to Prague, Peter finally tests out his gift from the late Tony Stark. Say, Edith. Hello, Peter. I am Edith. Edith stands for, even dead, I'm the hero. Oh, come on. Really? Just come around and say it, why don't you? This movie is all about Tony Stark! Then the bus makes a pit stop, and Peter meets a hot lady in black leather. Too soon. Close the door. Oh? Take off your clothes. Oh, yeah! Turns out Fury took the liberty of making Peter a different suit so he wouldn't be recognized in Europe. Sure, it fits fine. I don't really need to try. Take off your clothes. But then he gets caught with his pants down. Oh, no! This is not what it looks like, just... Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, what? Are you doing Hold on! Are you serious? That was all kinds of wrong! You do not take pictures of other guys with their pants down! That's just perverted! You cannot show that photo, dude. Come on. I'm sorry, man. I have to. She deserves the truth. The truth that you dabble in child porn? Peter isn't 18 yet, and you just took a picture of him with dropped trousers! Without consent! You deserve whatever you have coming to you! Brad Davis. He has a photo of me. Target is Brad Davis. Initiating strike. Releasing kill vehicle. Mmm. Yeah, I'd say that's justified. And then Peter nearly kills everyone by using tech that he has no idea what it does. Just like... And then he saves them from a deadly problem that was his fault to begin with. Again, just like... Let's try that again. Deploying second drone. Sometimes I wonder, what were they going for? Why did you make Spider-Man such an idiot? It's kind of amazing, really, just how stupid he is. For a kid smart enough to design his own web fluid and web shooters from scratch, he sure doesn't have any street smarts at all. Stark gave you a multi-billion dollar AR tactical intelligence system, and the first thing you do with it? It's trying to blow up your friends. It's clear to me that you were not ready for this. 
And we have a winner! Yes! Thank you, Fury! Thank you for hitting that nail right on the noggin! The fire monster appears and starts attacking the carnival, then Spidey and Mysterio fight him. Oh, sorry. Night Monkey and Mysterio. Do you think that's Spider-Man? No, no, no. It's like a European ripoff version of the monkey. What's, it, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, uh it, Night, Night Monkey. Night Monkey? Yeah. <laughs> Of all the names you could come up with. Oh, uh, he climbs walls and wears all black. Night Monkey! And so Beck destroys the fire elemental by flying inside of it. Beck, what are you doing? What I should have done last time. Lying? No, you did that last time. Then he appears to destroy the monster and makes himself look like the hero. Then the pair grabs some drinks and Beck asks him about the Edith glasses. You try them on. No, come on. Try them on. I don't want, I don't want to try them on. on. That's it. Make him work for it. Convince Peter this was his idea. The next Tony Stark, I trust you. Maybe he didn't trust me to have Edith, he just trusted me to pick who should. Stark gave you the glass. Stark gave me a choice. And Caesar refused the crown a third time. I'd like to transfer your control over to Quentin Beck. Look good on you. Thank you. Oh yeah, this is a great idea. Give a guy you just met a whole fleet of drones which can be hailed from anywhere on Earth and destroy any target Beck desires. How could this possibly backfire? Yep, that's how. Beck, as it turns out, was a total phony! See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Somebody get this stupid costume off me! Wow, he's an idiot! Way to go, Peter. This is your finest screw up since you put a random glowy thing into Ned's backpack. What will our quirky Peter do next? Will he give nukes to Dr. Doom? Will he give Galactus steroids? Will he snap everyone out of existence? Find out next time on Peter Screws the Pooch. Same dumb time, same dumb channel. You are so stupid. How could you think this was a good idea? Just because you don't want the responsibilities of being an adult and you'd rather just be a kid and have fun? <clears throat> you think it's a good idea to hand over total control of your drones to a guy you barely know? I'm not a religious man, but in times like this, even I must say, OH MY GOD! What? He gave the drones to Beck! What? How could he do that? I know, right? Beck reveals, through a mountain of exposition, that he used to work for Stark and built revolutionary hologram technology for him, which Tony lovingly named... Binarily Augmented Retro framing or barf. He renamed my life's work, barf. And then he fired me. So to get back at him, he gathered other folks who were screwed over by Stark Industries. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave. And they all joined forces to get their hands on Stark's technology and take the credit they feel they're owed. So Beck used his hologram technology to simulate threats and used drones to cause real damage, which sold the illusion that real monsters were attacking cities and Mysterio was defeating them. Wow. Very original. To Peter Parker! To Peter Parker! Poor kid. Then Peter tells Ned that he's done with his mission, but the trip is cut short because monsters keep popping up at every turn. So Peter decides it's now or never to tell MJ how he feels. It's our last night in Europe, and I had this plan that I wanted to tell you. MJ, I... I'm Spider-Man. What? <laughs> Peter Washington? The fact that you, like, disappear out of nowhere? What about tonight? It was the night monkey. The night monkey? Yeah, that's what it said on the news. And the news never lies. Oh, you're gonna regret saying that. Then MJ pulls out a projector that fell off of one of Beck's drones, and Peter realizes he's been tricked. I am Spider-Man, and I've really messed up. At the same time, Beck notices one of his drones is missing a projector and traces it back to Peter. You know, William, one day, after I've had to kill Peter Parker because of this, I hope you remember that his blood is on your hands! Jake Gyllenhaal. I tell ya, this dude is a great villain. He's suave enough to be likable, but also angry enough to be mentally deranged. I love this guy. Then Peter needs to tell Nick Fury that Beck is a fraud, but he's afraid if he just calls Fury, Beck will tap his phone. So he travels to Berlin to tell Fury in person. Get in. It's back. No, 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 listen. Wait until we're secure. Seriously, dude, how could you fall for this? 
Beck is a liar. Mysterio, the elementals is all fake. Well, if this is true, then Beck's very dangerous and we need to be smart. Oh, come on! He doesn't even sound like Fury! He speaks with Fury's voice, but with Mysterio's non-verbals! By the way, A-plus performance by Sam Jackson. It's Beck. He's here. No, no, he's just in a... Fury! Wow, Peter. Wow. I thought we were close. You told me you had to run after that girl. Now this is what I'm talking about. A truly menacing villain who doesn't just punch hard, but instead plays mind games with his victims. After a while, neither Peter nor the audience knows what's real. You made your choice. And now you have to. Well, well, well. Looks like the real Fury showed up at the perfect time. Almost too perfect, if you ask me. Next people are trying to find. It's back. Everyone who could expose him. It's back. Who'd you tell? Um. I know you told someone. Don't you dare say a word, Peter. He is playing you like a violin. Who else did you uh, tell? Okay, just Ned and MJ from my class. And you are so dumb. Just a sucker. So now all your friends have to die. What'd I tell ya? When facing the master of illusions, you can't trust anything! But for what it's worth, Peter, I really am sorry. I like trains. Good night, monkey. Yo, Miles. Yeah? There's bad job opening. Oh, bullshit! Are you fucking kidding me? How do you do that? I how do you get hit by a fucking train and still come out alive? Superpowers or not, he is Spider-Man, not Superman! You're not Superman, you know. Then he somehow winds up alive in a holding cell in the Netherlands and calls Happy to come pick him up. Oh my god, Happy. Relax! Don't tell him to relax, Happy! How can I relax when I messed up so bad? I trusted Beck, and now he's gonna kill my friends in half of Europe, so please, do not tell me to relax! I'm not Iron Man. You're never gonna be Iron Man. Tony was my best friend. He second-guessed everything he did. He was all over the place. The one thing that he did that he didn't second-guess was picking you. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were gonna be here after he was gone. And your friends are in trouble. Your tech is missing. What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna kick his ass. Then Peter assembles a new suit with the most advanced tech yet. Bring up everything you have on Spider-Man. And as if you needed any more proof that this movie should have been called Iron Man Jr., just look at this shot-for-shot -shot recreation. What? Nothing. You take care of the suit, I'll take care of the music. Oh, I love Led Zeppelin! The f*** you say?! I love Led Zeppelin! Okay, it's not working out, I'm gonna need the suit back. ACDC, Peter. ACDC! Everybody knows this. It's like a prerequisite to living on Earth. Everyone is born knowing that ACDC did Back in Black. It's that common knowledge. Yeah, and besides, man, everybody knows Thor's the one who gets the lead out. Awesome flick if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. Meanwhile, the class is about to head back to New York, and Brad finally gets his comeuppance. I'm talking about Peter. Has no one else here noticed how shady he is? Because I saw him in the back room of a rest stop with some woman in his underwear. Brad, why do you think it's cool to take pictures of people in the bathroom? Yeah, dude. What's that about? No, 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 it wasn't like that. It was, uh... I, I, I was trying to uh, take, trying to take, trying to take... No, 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 no. I hope you brought some aloe for that burn. Oh! Yay, MJ! Way to go, girl! But it turns out their bus driver is working for Beck and places them right in the kill zone so that everyone who knows Beck's secret will die. Oh my god, get off the bus! Now oh, that is an Avengers level threat. Oh yeah. Why are there no other Avengers here? Were they all unavailable, or could they just not be bothered to get out of bed? What about Thor? Off-world. Doctor Strange. Unavailable. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. So Peter jumps into the illusion and starts taser-webbing the drones, causing the illusion to break. Do you see anything? Yeah. And I'm gonna kill him. Ooh, so close! But the phrase we were looking for was... And I'm gonna squash him like a bug. 
That would have been so much better! Then Happy gets Peter's friends to safety, and Spidey takes the fight to back. You want these? Come and get them. And then Peter uses his spider sense, or Peter Tingle as they call it in this movie, and senses where all the drones are, even though he can't see them. Gee, that would have been useful earlier in the movie, wouldn't it? You couldn't sense that coming? During the fight, Beck gets shot by his own drone, and Peter demands the glasses back. You lied to me, and I trusted you. Stark was right. You do deserve that. Okay, you'd think by now I would have seen that coming, but wow, that took me by surprise. Beck made a hologram of himself to lure Peter in and cloaked his real self so he could shoot Peter. You can't trick me anymore. Edith, turn off the drones. Shall I execute Just all cancellation protocols? Do it. Execute them all. Confirmed. Okay, how does that work? When he gave the glasses to Beck earlier, Edith said, any transfer will require confirmation. So Peter can't use them anymore, not unless Beck told Edith to transfer control back to Peter, which he didn't. But whatever, let's just assume Stark made sure Peter could always use them. Then the drones are called off and Peter asks Beck why he did it. How could you do all of this? People didn't believe. And nowadays, they'll believe anything. Damn. When did MCU movies start to get deep again? Which is a great thing, by the way. I want more of that. Then MJ and Peter finally get together. Ned and Betty finally break up. Duh. Shocker! And Aunt Tomei and Happy finally come clean about having sex. I think. Summer fling. Yes, that evolves and grows like I still don't any know where other it's going to go. open to wherever it might lead. Anywhere. I'm so going to go part of the date. unit because uh, we all are interconnected. Bye. We are. Then Peter swings through the city, takes a picture, and runs on the side of a building. Uh, can't you come up with anything original? Although I did like this little Easter egg. We see the same bridge where the Avengers fought in the Battle of New York, along with a sign that says, We are so excited to show you what comes next. And then we see phase one, two, three, and a question mark for phase four, because we don't know what to expect yet. That is pure brilliance, and only true MCU fans will understand why. You ready? Yeah. You're gonna love this. Ah, yes. Remember that iconic scene in the Raimi trilogy where Spider-Man and MJ swing through the city in what is pretty much the most romantic thing ever? Well... <laughs> This one was a little more realistic. I'm not gonna watch! I'm not gonna watch! I'm not gonna watch! And for once, this isn't a ripoff. Because even though they did the scene in a past movie, this version brought something new to the table. We see a completely different reaction from last time, and it's pretty hilarious to watch. And that was Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, it was an okay movie, but I wouldn't say there were any huge plot twists. I managed to send the elemental back to the dimensional rift, but I don't think I'm going to make it off this bridge alive. Spider-Man attacked me for some reason. He has an army of weaponized drones, Stark technology. He's saying he's the only one who's going to be the new Iron Man, no one else. Are you sure you want to commence the drone attack? There will be significant casualties. Do it! Execute them all! Oh shit! This is jaw-dropping! Now the world thinks Spider-Man caused all that damage in London, endangered all those innocent lives, and they think he killed Mysterio! But if you think that's bad, just wait. There's more. There you have it, folks. Conclusion proof. Shut up! J.K. Simmons reprises his role as J. Jonah Jameson! This alone makes the movie worth seeing! After a 12-year hiatus, we finally get J.K. Simmons back in a Spider-Man movie! And what a timely update, making him an Alex Jones parody. I like to eat children! I'm a throwback! I'm setting fires everywhere! I am so glad the filmmakers did this. More than that, I'm glad they didn't choose anyone else. You can replace Spider-Man. You can replace MJ. You can replace Gwen, Aunt May, and Uncle Ben. But you cannot replace Jameson. This role is as iconic to Simmons as RDJ is to Iron Man. It's like he just jumped off the pages and gave him life. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. But come on, can you blame me? It may only be a 20 second cameo, but boy, was it a glorious 20 seconds. But that's not all folks. Here's the real blockbuster. Brace yourselves, you might want to sit out. Spider-Man's real, Spider-Man's real name is- No, are you serious? Are they really gonna do it? Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. 
What the f So I guess this is a thing now. Every Spider-Man movie now ends with someone dropping an F-bomb. What the f Holy crap! The whole world knows who Spidey is! I was not ready for that. I, I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, at first the movie started off pretty slow. Very by the numbers, playing it safe. But then as it went on, it slowly got more and more interesting. They created a complex, interesting villain who actually is genuinely different from what we've seen before. Oh, Thanos punches hard? Big deal! Mysterio tricks you into punching walls! Oh, Ultron has an army of robots? Well, Mysterio preys on your deepest, darkest fears! It's actually enough to make you forget he doesn't have any powers! He's just an ordinary man with an extraordinary mind! He's evil Iron Man! And then, even in death, he still takes Spider-Man down with him by using the media to spin the story and leave Spider-Man holding the bag! And then, of all things, he reveals his secret identity to the world! Mysterio, you are an amazing villain. I'm so sorry to see you go, because I don't think anyone will ever top your level of diabolical. And after a bombshell reveal like what we just saw, I don't know how Marvel will ever top themselves. You gotta tell him. It was fine. We need you to come back, because everyone kept asking me where the Avengers are, and I don't know what to say to that, so you're lucky that's part of it. Here's a scroll the entire time. Fury and Hill! Holy crap! Who else is a shapeshifter? Huh? I mean, who else is not who they say they are? Can we trust anyone anymore? This feels like some sort of secret invasion. So that was Spider-Man Far From Home. It started off pretty slow, but then it got good. Nick Fury was a scrawl? Incredible. Jillian Hall's Mysterio? Extra incredible. For the first time in a while, I'm actually excited to see the next live-action Spidey film. I really want to know where they're going to take this. Is he a wanted fugitive now? Will he go on the run and be hunted down for murder? Will the Scorpion break out of prison? And now that he knows who Spider-Man is, will he threaten his aunt? Oh, the possibilities are endless. Play your cards right, guys, because you have the potential to make this next movie really dark. Peter could be living on the lam and hunted down at every turn. You could make him really grow as a character, like a ton. My favorite part in this movie was when Mysterio said people need to believe, and these days they'll believe anything. That line worked because it showed the audience that the movie can take itself seriously. Up until now, it's all just been a big game to him. A teenage boy playing dress up, stopping some sealess criminals, and having fun doing it. But now he's going to be running for his life! This is the perfect chance for Peter to mature from a spider boy into a spider man! If you do it right, Spider-Man Homeless could be the best one yet. I'm the Invisible Man, and when there's a sequel to Show's Promise, I got it covered.